Prior to cell division, the genetic information which is stored in chromosomes must be copied in a process called DNA replication and the duplicated DNA separated evenly between two cells. Understanding of DNA replication comes largely from studies of E. coli, bacteria that are found by the billions in the large intestine. Let's take a look at how DNA replication occurs in an E. coli cell. As we zoom in, we see the DNA. At the origin of replication, the two strands of DNA separate and then serve as templates for making new strands. The result is a replication bubble. The bubble grows in both directions, forming two replication forks. In humans, numerous replication bubbles are formed. Let's zoom in on one of them. Some of the proteins that work together at the replication fork are shown here. Here, DNA helicase unwinds the two strands, and DNA polymerases type 3 build new strands of DNA. A critical component of the DNA polymerase 3 protein is the DNA clamp protein, which prevents the polymerase from dissociating from the template strand. Thus, the process of DNA replication is called semi-conservative. Each new double helix contains one original DNA strand and one new DNA strand. Because strands in a DNA double helix run in opposite directions, the new strands must be made in different ways. One new strand, the leading strand, is built continuously and forms from its 5' prime end to its 3' prime end. The orientation of the other new strand, the lagging strand, is opposite to the working orientation of DNA polymerase 3, and thus the lagging strand must be built in fragments, called Okazaki fragments, in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction using multiple primers. First, let's focus on the leading strand. DNA polymerase 3 builds a new strand of DNA by adding DNA nucleotides one at a time. Each new nucleotide must pair up with its complementary nucleotide on the parental strand. Adding new nucleotides works the same way on both the leading and lagging strands. Because of the opposite orientation, replication of the lagging strand is more complicated. To initiate synthesis, an enzyme called primase reads the DNA strand and produces a short segment of RNA which serves as a primer. A DNA clamp protein surrounds the DNA and attaches to DNA polymerase 3 which builds the rest of the new fragment of DNA until it reaches the previously synthesized Okazaki fragment. When the fragment is finished, the polymerase releases from the Okazaki fragment. How are Okazaki fragments of the lagging strand joined together? A different DNA polymerase, DNA polymerase 1, removes RNA and replaces it with DNA. However, it cannot finish connecting the Okazaki fragments. An enzyme called DNA ligase joins the Okazaki fragments together. Growth of the leading and lagging strands continues at both replication forks until there are two identical, double-stranded DNA molecules. Although bacteria are very different from humans, the process of DNA replication in bacteria is similar to what happens in your own cells.